fluorite always looks a little bit alien to me. It does. They're so sharp in their edges and flat in their faces, but they're growing into each other. It's definitely extraterrestrial looking. This is gonna be good. We've been talking recently about great gemstone varieties that are awesome for beginner gemstone collectors. And that's what we've got today. This is one of my personal favorites. It's a gemstone that has crazy variety and it's actually pretty common and available, which... <laughs> I'm laughing at his hair. <laughs> it's just from this angle, it's particularly <laughs> voluminous. <laughs> Who said there are no straight lines in nature? Did someone say that? I don't know, they were super wrong though. Oh, cool, oh my gosh. I love that one. This is fluorite. Both of these pieces are from Namibia. They obviously look very different, but they have a few key characteristics. So fluorite is one of the gems that's in the cubic or isometric crystal system. Fluorite often forms in cubes. It has perfect cleavage in four directions. So you get this really sharp, cubic edges, they often twin, so you can see kind of like cubes forming out of each other. So this is all natural. It's from the Polish Prodigy pocket in Namibia. It was mined in 2010, and they only found like 40 to 50 specimens. And so if you see one of these, get your hands on it, because there really <laughs> are not many. These are exceptional because of that really sharp color zoning with the pink on the face, the purple on the edges. So fluorite is calcium fluoride. It's an allochromatic mineral, meaning its coloration comes from things not in its base chemical composition. Its coloration often comes from rare earth elements like yttrium, cerium, a lot of others. Those rare earth elements behave atomically similarly to calcium. And so there can be a lot of replacement in the crystal structure and it causes coloration. So you can have these pinks, yellows, greens. The purple often comes from an atomic defect where radiation knocks out an electron from its place in the crystal structure. Light interacts in that vacancy to form this purple color. It's really startling to look at, especially when you tilt it and view it from different angles. You can see that region of color is pretty shallow. These types of specimens are often sandblasted at the bottom, so more a light. A lot of transmitted light through the, yeah. Yeah, and so then these concentrations of color are more visible. Do we have a flashlight by chance? We do. We can really see how translucent you can it is really now. It's so translucent, you can see the colors really popping, and I just can't get over how thin those pink squares are. The, the geometry of it. And the geometry. That is such a cool specimen. I've never actually seen this one. It is a really cool specimen, but let's talk about the crazy electric green color of this guy. This is an extremely rare variety of fluorite called alien eye fluorite. The following in the mineral collecting world that this particular variety has is <laughs> pretty fanatic. Well, you have this like really intensely almost radiation type green. And then the black is kind of like framing the eye. How cool is that? It reminds me of the Trapeche emeralds. Yes, I could see that. This guy was found in 2008. This guy came from something that came to be known as the alien eye pocket. Ah. Can you put yourself in the miner's boots, you swing your pickaxe, the wall falls out, and suddenly you're gazed upon by a thousand alien eyes. <laughs> Can you imagine finding I, that pocket? <laughs> Not a one trick pony. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I get the clue. I can tell we're doing this by locality because these mm -hmm. are all Chinese. So China is actually one of the biggest producers of fluorite in the entire world. Fluorine is often extracted for various uses, namely use in hydrofluoric acid, things like rocket fuel, nuclear reactors. We just earlier said that fluorite is part of the cubic crystal system. And this is a really great cube. These are not cubes. This is still fluorite though. This is a formation called botryoidal. The term botryoidal just, I think it 
basically loosely translates to grape-like. Yeah, a bunch right? of grapes. Which, which makes sense. That looks like it. I mean, it. look at this. It looks like you could get some wine out of that. Botryoidal growth, what happens is you can have some particulate matter, sometimes like sand or other types of small particles that kind of get nested into the mineral, and then growth occurs out of those, and it'll grow in radial forms and concurrently. As they expand outward, sometimes they can run into each other. That's why you have these bunches kind of looks like brain or cloud-like. This is a good combination of those two from a coloring perspective. Oh, the colors? Perspective. Yeah, yeah. This is a very identifiable piece from a locality perspective. This is banded Chinese fluorite. Fluorite can be banded. You'll find a lot of banded yeah. fluorite. In faceted form, it's really cool. One thing that I really like about fluorite is there are a range of values. These are large stones and they're not super expensive. Actually, when I first got into the gem industry, banded Chinese fluorites were one of the first things that caught my eye. They're pretty affordable. They come in large carat weights, and then obviously the banding is such a cool optical effect that sure. you get there. If you rotate it in certain directions, you can see very sharp For sure. banding. And each gem has different patterns of banding. So actually, you can buy these. So we'll put links in the description for you to peruse those. Those. Better move fast though, because I think myself or some other people might have their eyes on these. I know, they're really fun. These are a great first stone to collect. I really love banded Chinese fluorite. Okay, so cool thing here. Fluorite can also be color change. So that's an optical phenomenon where under different lighting conditions, a stone can change color. Some people say color shift, where it's just a little bit more subtle of a change. So how do we elicit that color change? We subject them to a different light source. You can have cooler light, warmer light. We have one flashlight, but it's two no. different temperatures of color. One is daylight and one is incandescent light. So the daylight is a cooler color, the incandescent is a warmer color. So here's our daylight. These lights are similar to daylight, so, right, so there's yeah. not going to be a so big change. So there's not a whole lot here. of change yet. We're, this is our baseline. And then I'm going to switch our light temperature. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's purple. It's more purple now. Much more purple, actually. Some would call it a shift. Yeah, some might call, call it, it a change. change. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. More varieties from across the pond. So this is gonna be good. Oh, I love this piece. Both of these are from England. So this is a bracelet. This is called Blue John Fluorite. So it comes from the French Bleu and Jeune. This is a really special type of fluorite. Blue John has been prized going back to Roman times. It's only found in Derbyshire, England. It's not very durable, so they're often impregnated with a resin. This actually has a gemological report associated with it. It's natural with no signs of treatment. So this guy does not have any resin. It does not. The place where this is extracted is what's called a scheduled site of special scientific interest, meaning that the mining is heavily regulated. And so only a certain amount of Blue John comes out of this locality in a year, which means that it maintains this high value and high price. So this is a really special piece to have. This is actually also for sale. You can buy this. But let's talk about that. This is obviously not Blue John fluoride. But what it is, is fluorescent. The term fluorescent actually comes from fluorite, not the other way around. So under long wave ultraviolet light, this fluorite specimen, which is decidedly green, is going to turn decidedly blue. Look at that, really blue in those corners there. So this fluorite is from a really famous mine called the Rogerly Mine in England. It is famous for this change under long wave from this jelloey green to this nice vibrant blue. Cool fact about the Rogerly mine is that it is the only commercial mine in Great Britain that is worked solely for procuring mineral specimens. I think those kinds of mines are really interesting because they're not out there for like resources or utility. They're purely like aesthetic mines. They're like 
there's some pretty stuff down here yeah. and we've got to get it out. I do want to mention, a lot of people confuse fluorite and fluoride, what you use for your teeth. Understandable. They both have fluorine, which is F, the chemical element. Fluorite, the gem, is calcium fluoride. What you have in toothpaste is a sodium fluoride. And so there are important differences There's between the difference. two. <laughs> so we're told that we don't even have boxes big enough for these specimens. Oh, cool. Oh, that's heavy. Oh okay, so these fluorite specimens are both from the United States. Two of the most famous localities are in Illinois and right here in Tennessee. I've got a specimen from the Elmwood Mine in Tennessee, very famous fluorite mine. It actually was originally a place where zinc was mined out of. Tennessee is one of the major producers of zinc throughout the world. We're crazy for zinc. <laughs> but this one's really cool. It actually kind of reminds me of the Namibian material from like the colorless perspective. Sure, so you yeah, have yeah. these massive fluorite cubes and uh, you can see little tiny cubes forming the big cubes and then you have speckles yeah. of the purple fluorite and you actually have some intense color zoning at the edges of the fluorite so you have a lot going on here it looks like a Jackson Pollock you know it looks like someone took purple paint and went and just flecked it on I actually this is probably like sacrilege but I've always thought this piece looked a little bit like mold was growing on for it. sure <laughs> Yeah. Another feature that caught my eye immediately, fluorite has four planes of perfect cleavage. Light gets trapped in these planes in specific ways and then it reflects and refracts. You get a whole bunch of spectral colors. And so you can see that in several parts of the specimen. This specimen comes from arguably the most prolific locality for high quality specimens of fluorite in the whole world. Southern Illinois is from a place called Cave-In Rock this locality is especially known for the bluish purple colored specimens, especially with the sharp geometric features. It was a huge array of enormous pockets that were discovered that had enormous fluorite specimens in them. Let's also talk about the phantoms that we see. Yeah. So fluorite is famous for what's called phantoms. Phantoms are distinct crystal forms visible within a larger crystal. They can be different colors or shapes. It does look like there's like a long lost stone inside, inside this, this stone. sort of more transparent outer edge of the stone. Yeah. We've got a sad tale to tell you. It's a sad tale. If you play Dungeons and Dragons, you'll recognize this as an octahedron. It's or an eight sided if you're figure. A gemologist. Or if you're a gemologist, you'll recognize this as an octahedron, an eight sided specimen. So this is from Southern Illinois. This is what happens when you take one of these large specimens of fluorite and hit it really hard with a hammer. It'll split along those four planes of perfect cleavage like, like you mentioned earlier. So when these mines in southern Illinois were at their peak output, fluorite that they would find, they would break them up. They would take the hammer to them and reduce them to octahedrons, which is in itself a pretty cool little phenomenon that you can get such a neat regular shape from such a chaotic you know, blow from a hammer. But yeah, it's uh, sad but true. We couldn't make it to every locale, but here are a few last stops. Okay. Oh, cool. Oh, I love that dude. one. It's like an egg. Yeah, okay. Well, right away, my eye is drawn to this guy. We talked earlier about botryoidal fluorite. So sometimes you can have like one botryoidal growth, which is kind of cool to see. This guy comes from India, and it really does look like a sunny side up. Egg. egg. Which is crazy. You should talk about that one. I will because this is from Asturias in Spain. This is also fluorite and this is what's known as a complex formation. It's not cubic, it's not botryoidal. It's a little complex. You know? And this one is really cool. This is from South Africa but the reason why it's cool is it has pyrite in it. Oh really? Yeah. So you can see some metallic flecks there. Yeah, I see that. Okay, so as you know, we always take a closer look. I've got my favorite specimen. What's yours? Mine's the Namibian. Oh, the, the first from one. From the Polish Prodigy Pocket. I just think the way that the color forms, the scarcity of it, the fact that only you know less than 100 of these are floating around in the world, I think that is just way cool. This guy is my closer look. Really, it, it looks like the surface of an alien planet. It just looks like something out of a Marvel movie. So let's take a closer look.
I've really enjoyed checking out all of these fluorite specimens. I hope you did as well. I did. I love fluorite. And if you want to learn more about fluorite, go to our website, gemstones.com. We have a bunch of articles, videos, and you can peruse about all of these different varieties. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.